My name is Michael Galker. I'm in Hagerstown, Maryland. I was a public school teacher for 42 years, uh, eight years in middle school, and 34 years at a high school within walking distance of where I live. Uh, after I retired, I spent two years as an adjunct art teacher at Barbara Ingham School for the, for the Arts in downtown Hagerstown, which turned out to be a dream job. I was only working about 20 hours a week but the students had to, had to uh, audition to get to the school. That was their high school for the four years that they were there. And there were fine arts, music, drama, creative writing, all the arts. Each, each art had a, a floor or part of a floor to, uh, to work in. And it was, a, it was a phenomenal job because the kids were well behaved. They knew that if they messed up too badly, they had to go back to their home school. But that's not what they wanted. And, but the, one of the best things about that was the acceptance of the students, because no matter what, how odd they felt in some other situations, they were well accepted at that school. You walk in in the morning, and there was a lot of hugging and laughing and, and respect for each other, so that was a, a dream job. I went to Frostburg State, it was college then, majored in art, took every art course available, no, no minor, because I wanted to get all the art courses that I could. Had some great teachers, learned a lot of basic things, um, then came to work here in Washington County. And all along this whole time, I was, I was doing artwork because I felt like I was as much of an artist as I was a teacher. So I started doing craft shows, art shows, like some juried shows. There was a show in our local museum called the Cumberland Valley, and you'd, you'd send an entry card in with your titles. You know, we were only allowed two. And for the first few years that I entered work there, when it, but didn't get accepted, it said rejected on the on the postcard, which was kind of disheartening. But then they then they finally said not accepted, or they said what well, was accepted. So I learned early on that you don't get too excited about it when you're accepted, so you don't get down in the dumps and throw everything away, all your materials away because you didn't get accepted. I still enter a lot of shows at, at MFA. And recently I've had a couple non-acceptances, as I like to put it. And I did have, I did get a show into the American Landscapes exhibit that's there now. So I was real tickled with that. So I get excited when it happens. I've had a few one-man shows in Annapolis, uh, Quiet Waters Park, and uh, one of the restaurants downtown, and a couple of things like that. So I feel uh, kind of connected to the Annapolis area right now. I started, some pen and ink techniques in 1975, one of which is the circle idea. I'll explain that in detail later, but uh, that was a kind of an invention of mine. I don't think I've ever seen anybody else do representation of work with the circles. And then in addition to stippling and cross hatching and all the other traditional things. I actually started Pen and ink. I didn't do much in high school, but in college I had a couple of pen and ink classes, and that was the days where you went out with a bottle of India ink and a nib pen, and you dipped it and you drew with it for a few seconds, and then you'd run out of ink, or the pen would snag, and the ink would go splattering all over the place. And then you you had to figure out what to make that blob into, or throw the whole thing away because there's, there's no fixing it. One of the biggest things about pen and ink is, and I work in, with black ink all the time. There are colored inks, but I've never been happy with those. So you're putting black ink on a white piece of paper. In order for something to stand out, you have to put more ink in some places and less ink in other places. Now we're assuming that you don't want just an outline drawing like some of the Picasso or Matisse drawings of the past. You want shading, modeling, detail, so that the traditional ways to do this are one of the one of the most popular one is stippling, which I've done. I have a few examples of some of that around. That requires a lot of dots on a piece of paper, over and over and over. But you can change it. You can add more dots, fewer dots, and you can make it darker. But you can't, of course, erase any of the dots. Now, the idea that I came up with with this, with like the shoe here is that you use little circles ranging 
for me, anywhere from about a millimeter to a centimeter wide, and you don't overlap the circles, you don't spread them out, they're always touching, each, just touching each other, kind of fitting in like stones or bricks. So you get darker areas by creating smaller circles and lighter areas with bigger circles. It's a very simple process. Um, sounds simple, but it's not always simple. But this drawing, which I did, this is one of the first major drawings I did with this technique, actually dates to 1975, I think it is. I did the shoe, it was based on a Converse shoe that I had sitting on a coffee table. And then I thought, how am I going to do the laces? Because I didn't want to draw laces in circles because that would be distracting. So I came up with the idea of putting the lines in the background and leaving the shoelaces completely plain, stopping and starting the lines. So the lines where the shoe is sitting are closer together, creating a darker area, and they go gradually further apart as you go up the drawing. And then negative space, but the, the shoes, the laces, becomes positive in the sense that it's part of the subject. So it's kind of a mixture of positive and negative space in a non-traditional way. Nancy was uh, an African elephant at the National Zoo. Uh, back in the 80s, I took a lot of black and white photographs of her and some of the other animals. I've done drawings of a giraffe, a lion, who I think is still there, his name is Luke some baby seals and all those sorts of things. But the one that I found the most interesting was Nancy, and I didn't didn't even know who she was. But uh, several years ago when I was still teaching, I went to the zoo with a, in a, on a field trip with some students, and I took some of these photographs with me that I had taken, and one of the elephant handlers said, well, she's not here, she died in 2000, but her name was Nancy. And she even gave me the name of a woman who was part of, was a member of the board of directors of Fonz and her phone number and there's a whole days worth of stories with, with that person because she was such a devoted lover of the animals at the National Zoo. But anyway, I had these black and white photographs blown up and this particular drawing is the large drawing on the wall. Uh, Nancy's sort of coming straight at you and I decided ahead of time that I wanted to do something really big and I thought well this is going to take as many as 100 hours based on drawings that I had done before and how long they took. It actually only took me about 50 hours which is almost like a quick sketch compared to the other things. One of the things that I'm always really concerned about is composition and I spend, I take the photographs and put post-its or tape or something over the photograph so that I'm blocking out what I want. And I usually use a grid method where I draw squares on the photograph and enlarge those squares on the large paper and I'll know exactly how, how big it's going to be, the dimensions are going to be. And then you know that if the eye fits in this square, which is the third one down and the third one in or whatever, and it's going to be the same place on the drawing, but it may be three or four times as big as the one on the photograph. So it's a very quick it seems like a lot of work in the beginning to draw the lines, but it's a very quick way of enlarging the piece. So that one's pretty much intact. You will notice that I didn't, I don't, most of the time don't do any background with these drawings. They're just a white background. It gives you a nice stark contrast. I did leave a few lines from the grass that she's standing in. And just negative space for the trunk. And I, there was a trunk on the other side, but it's, but it was kind of oddly shaped. So I just left a little notch in her trunk there, where the, where the tusk would come out, and just let your imagination fill that in. I have a couple other drawings that illustrate that. Now this one is the same animal, but a different photograph, which I don't have in my hand right now. But you'll see that the tusk is only partially drawn. You have to visually fill that in yourself. I cut the ears off. There's a little bit of negative space at the top and some here and here, but all that becomes really, really important when I'm setting up the, the, the original composition for the drawing. I'm kind of really obsessed with how, how much, what the, the composition looks like, the positive and negative space. But on the other hand, this one, one on, the, on the floor, same, same uh, elephant, obviously, just a close-up of her eye. And I have another one that's even a bigger, 
more more of a sort of a zoomed in drawing, but it's the same. The, the physical the drawing is the same size as this one, about two feet square. So I did a series like that. We were wide, tighter, and tighter. So you can see the different effects that way. So in both of all of these right here are done with the circle technique, and then I have some done in lines and in dots. As I said before, pen and ink is a matter of putting a lot of black ink on a white piece of paper. How you do that varies. There are several pretty old techniques. One of the one of the oldest is stippling, which is just a lot of dots. Now, when you do this, you can keep adding more dots to make it darker, and you can create light and dark parts of your drawing. The problem is, this takes a lot of patience and a lot of time but you can fix it. With the circle drawings, like in this little patch here that I just did as a demo, you can't fix it. Now this, this is making a bigger mark than I normally do, just to give you an idea of how it works and how they fit into each other. But you have to be careful, at least in my mind, you don't want the circles to look like they cross lines and they're sloppy. If you're gonna do this, they have to be neatly drawn but there are no rules it's not written down and it's not a law that says you have to do it a certain way so if you ever do this have fun with it a fatter pen obviously would create thicker dots bigger dots and go faster but you get to the point where you have if you want a light area shaded in you have to be you get to the point where you're putting dots, you're thinking about every dot that you're putting down. If, you're, if it's gonna be real thick, real dark and dense, it doesn't matter too much. When you get into bigger areas, you don't want little groups of dots and then others spread out evenly if you're trying to create an even. Uh, if you have a pencil and you want a shade, you can do very precise cross hatching or just normal strokes with the pencil and you can put, with the ballpoint pen, it's easy to make really dark areas because you have a lot of lines over top of each other, but you also have the pressure that you put on the pen. The hard part is making things lighter. Sometimes you have to drag the pen just barely touching the paper, and especially if the paper has a little bit of tooth or roughness to it, you can, you can drag it. You have to be real careful not to press too hard and blend the lines in different directions. And then you get little areas that are like the, the wood ornament here, the chrome parts. This has, this is almost white, but this is a little bit gray. And that's a more difficult technique to pull off than the dark areas, especially like right here where it's very, very light. So it's, it's interesting because it's sort of a, almost like a pencil technique but it's more difficult than pencil because obviously you can't erase things. That gets back to the what I said earlier, pen and ink is very unforgiving. You can't correct anything unless you can add things to it. This talks about pen and ink and watercolor together. Now I, was, I did the watercolor, which if you look closely, the tomato is not a slice of tomato, it's actually a 57 Chevy sideways so there's the front tire and the fin and anybody who knows cars of the 50s would recognize what that's like so i used ink to kind of enhance some of the the area to find that a little better what the thing that i'm one of the most proud of with my artwork is that it's not all the same i don't have 500 pictures of paintings of landscapes or portraits or pets or i don't always i don't work in just one medium like some people do. And I'm not saying that's bad, but I'm proud of the fact that one day I might do pen and ink, and another day I might do watercolor or acrylic. Another entirely different technique is lines, and these are just parallel lines, vertical lines. In this case, I've called this vertical for a couple of reasons, obviously. These were actually done, this is a round object done with straight lines, all horizontal lines. Again, composition, a little bit of white space at the bottom. 
and the density uh, of the black lines. Not perfect, just a couple little flaws here and there. But that was done with a, with a T-square because it had to be exactly precise. I sometimes tend to get into series of drawings at a time, so I did four drawings of race cars with, with lines, with parallel lines, and I did at about the same time, I did four drawings of cars and other related things with, with stippling. Sometimes I do an ink drawing and then splashes of color over top of it. I actually make a lot of greeting cards under the name of Hall Mike. And sometimes I'll do a, an ink drawing of a flower and it's just lightly, very quickly, lay in some color. Now this one is a circle drawing with color, with just the washes of, of blue on top of it. This is a tree with all these and all the leaves are circles. I had done the drawing of the pen and ink part and I hadn't really done anything with it and I thought this could be fun so I just kind of threw in the color and it turned out pretty well. I think I got one except it sort of gallery like that. 